Hey, hello, welcome to the Blushing Report. We're gonna get right into the show. I want to hear from y'all. Why do you think men do not go to church? Why are so many women Christian and why are so many men not? So leave your comment below. Let's get into the conversation. Let's talk. The church, specifically the black church, has been effeminized. Mm. You know, obviously the pastor's been a man in most yeah. cases, but like you said, the congregation is 70 to 80% female. And the preaching in in many cases, I love great preaching. But sometimes it's geared toward just getting you emotional exactly. and getting you hyped, right? Yeah, 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 I've yeah. sat in services and the, the preacher, with all due respect, ain't really saying nothing. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Blessing Report. I'm Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy. In this video, we are sponsored by E525 Apparel, so that's Ephesians 525 Apparel. So make sure that you um, go support them, um, check them out, and also make sure that you support Faith and Humanity with their mustard seed necklaces. And today we have a great topic of top five reasons why men do not go to church. And just to um, give you a little bit about my background, so um, I got saved in 2012. Um, I'm currently going to a church. I've always um, been in the church context after being saved, but I was never um, Christian or grew up um, in a Christian household. Um, so I'm just pointing out the different things that I have found in my seven years of like being part of ministry, being part of church that I can recognize that it's pretty unappealing um, to men, and so I'm just giving uh, my top 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 five reasonings. Hey, yo, if you want a good church in Atlanta, <laughs> um, that is accompanying um, men, and you want to find like a good um, church home, come to Grace Midtown. If you know the worship group House Fires, um, then. Yo, this is our church, all right? Um, but here are my top five reasons men do not go to church. And this is just like my experience and it's things I don't like myself, all right? So number one, the church panders to women. And it even panders especially to single women. So if we are looking at um, just like church models, um, you will see that the church is primarily female, making up 80 to 90 percent of the congregation in the 10 to 20 percent being um, men. And economically, it's a pretty smart decision um, with the context um, being women account for 85% of all purchasing decisions, accounting for $7 trillion in annual spending, and I think around 60% of the world's wealth. And you're like, hey, why does that matter? Um, because um, what we see is that the church topics panders directly to their uh, base, right? So it's all about, just the sermon topics are about relationships, business, purpose, right? And if we're just talking about um, learning styles of men and women, we're just talking about generalizations here. Men um, lean towards topics of like math and sciences, analytical uh, minds, while women excel in like history and literature and more of the right brain creative mind. So if I am going into a church setting where, again, there is more of the storytelling, more of the tangents, the more of the emotional draws, sensationalism and sensualism, versus being grounded in scripture, that's a big turn off to men because that's not stuff that we like, right? And I think it was Christian Smith who said that what we're seeing nowadays in the American church is the rise of what he calls moralistic, therapeutic deism. How to make people moral. You know, I look like this perfect golden child, but I was so dead. A place to go to feel better about themselves. I'm asking you to feel good about who you are. And so as a result, we're seeing a church in America that's becoming ultimately Christless. So if we're following the gospel thinking it's all about us, 
we've missed Jesus' words entirely. Um, when it comes to sermons, only 3% of the Bible is covered in sermons. So what that means is that what you have is um, celebrity worship. You have the same material that is being preached in daytime television that you can hear from Steve Harvey, Oprah, The Sister Circle, um, The View being preached in a pulpit with a sprinkle of Jesus thrown in there. So if sermons are only covering about 3% of the Bible and they are going on these wild tangents, a lot of men are like, yo, I'm wasting my time. I've felt that um, a lot, uh, but I feel like if you're within the church context in the body of Christ, you'll see that um, when I go to a church, I'm like, man, I could just stay at home and read my Bible. Uh, I'm not coming back to that church. But a lot of men and just a lot of unsaved people are saying, oh, I'm not coming back to church at all. And this is the same reason why you don't see um, men at conferences, right? Because all these conferences are self-help, motivational conferences that you can get in the world. Well, again, a Christian context just being marriage panels, relationship panels, um, single conferences. Um, the same formula and uh, format that you will see from motivational speakers um, talking about self where there is no teaching of scripture of that more mathematical, scientific, analytical mind and more of that storytelling about family, self, children and experiences where you take a Bible verse uh, one Bible verse usually straight out of context and then uh, make it mean whatever you want. And I just feel like men <laughs> don't waste their time for the fake and they just leave or they don't come back or just say, I don't need this. Versus um, women, I think that um, have so many secondary things that keep them in church, right? Because um, men... If, if we're just talking about really like generalization, stereotypical stuff, right? Um, like like sports, action movies, um, business, money, um, and all that things, right? The church is offering none of that, right? But when it comes to women, if like, again, Jesus being the primary thing, Secondary things that the church is offering is like, hey, if you're not talking about Jesus, you are talking about some type of relationship. Women enjoy that. Men typically don't enjoy that. This is why you see men do not usually watch daytime television talk shows, but women are because that's their core, that's their base. And so you see this also within the church setting. Or um, if you go to church, your friends are there. But if I'm in the world, my worldly friends aren't going to church because they don't need it. And so you see like this double-minded lukewarmness where you can go to the club, go to the lounges, go be sinful, but also go to church. So my world context is both outside in the world, but also within the church. And then um, we have relationships talking. You get to dress nice, right? Um, if I'm a man and I like video games, I like chilling, I don't wanna wake up early, there is nothing that the church is offering in the secondary premise like violence, sports, um, competition that I'm finding in the church context. So again, um, this is why men often think that church is pretty disingenuous because it seems fake because there's so many cues within the church, right? The musicians know when to play to orchestrate um, it to get louder. The preacher knows when to rev up the people and the, um, the quotes and the um, sermons. It's the same as if you're like rapping or, or whatever. And so people know when to shout, sing, fall out, run around. But um, nobody is calling that out as disingenuine or fake. And I think it's just stuff that we live with. But if I'm not a Christian and I do not have a church background, I don't think that anyone should have to put up with the nonsense that we have just became accustomed to. And again, um, just like my story, my testimony, I got saved at 19. 
no church background, no Christian context. So when you enter this, when like legitimately you're reading the Bible and the only context you have is the Holy Spirit teaching you things and then you're entering church culture, I don't think a lot of people have a problem with Jesus or have a problem with Christ. I think people have a problem with church culture, which is not Jesus culture, it's not biblical, right? And so I don't think the theatrics or sensationalism is a problem, but I think it's a problem when you don't have the primary. <laughs> and then he said, now sacrifice God, put us in position to make sacrifices and we are rewarded. Our sacrifices are rewarded with abundance, with blessings and abundance. And then he goes into, uh, I don't like, I didn't like giving, I didn't like giving, but I was compelled to give. Then he tells a story about a time where he was a preacher and then there was the church and the church's budget was it, it was it was in a five figure deficit and he said i had the money i didn't have it for that but i had the money and immediately something told me you got to fill that deficit for that budget and i said to myself well i don't want to but then and he said this, and this is what he said he said and the thing is when the spirit talk to you and tell you yeah, I heard that to make part. sacrifices, yeah. you got to do it fast before you talk yourself out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, he ran. Yeah. I say, huh? So you mean to tell me if I am compelled to do something that I tell myself later with my rational thinking mind, I can't afford to do. I shouldn't listen to my rational thinking mind. I should just go ahead and dive in, face forward in the fr face first in the frozen lake. Yeah. So then he says, I want 20 people right now to stand up and give a thousand dollars. 20 people. Let me see. Who do I have? First he Who? said something about 10,000. Yeah, he said that his deficit was 10000 Yeah, yeah. He said what he gave was 10000 Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. said, but well, here, you guys can do better than yeah, that. Uh, now we want everybody to do <laughs> 20 people. But even up. before he said that, it were people walking up to the stage like strippers, like they walk up, uh, yeah. like we do in, Ma not, not Magic City, like we do in Cheetah, yeah. when you walk up and you have people yeah. running, and then they open up the garter belt, but instead, he didn't right. open up his garter belt, he said, oh no, just lay it down on the front. And so they down. laid down 20s and um, a couple hundred, whatever it was, I was close enough to the stage so I could see. And all the while this time is going on, I'm looking at Tit, two chains to y'all. <laughs> I'm looking at my old lady, I say, do you see this? So what we see from the video is that and <laughs> no lie, I like T.I. because <laughs> he really kept it real, kind of like Dave Chappelle. But um, he says, I'm a hustler. I can know when a con is being um, <laughs> being played. And I think that's one thing that we notice at, at, within the body of Christ also. We know the cues, like when the ties and offerings are happening, when something is disingenuous to get sensationalism, emotionalism, sensualism out of people with an emotional response. And this is what I'm gonna say, until the body of Christ preaches the real gospel of Jesus Christ, not this Americanized, westernized uh, exaggeration, <laughs> you will have people refusing to be discipled and then you'll have people to be completely turned off to the church model, right? So no lie, I think the um, current model of preaching needs to be completely thrown out. And um, simply put, if churches went back to the basics, uh, literally, directly reading from the Bible verbatim, um, you'll see more men in church and you'll see more discipleship as well because you wouldn't have all these storytelling tangents. You wouldn't have so much personality in the pulpit versus um, proper teaching, um, rightly dividing the word of truth and um, so much like theatrics and so much, just lies. And I don't think a lot of men are okay with the BS while a lot of um, young Christians are, right? And I know like, 
it's a lot of like generalizations that I'm making. I know there's a lot of good sound teaching um, churches, but I do think as a body of Christ, we need to recognize there's so many that aren't. And like even myself here in Atlanta, I don't know all the churches in Atlanta, but I ain't gonna lie. I know probably 10 solid churches that I would recommend personally. And that's a problem. <laughs> we are a metropolitan with millions of people here. And I'm like, hey, um, you're safe to go to like 10 churches and a lot of people will be on some garbage. That's a problem. So number one reason uh, men do not go to church, it panders to women with false preaching. Number two um, reason why men do not go to church, um, there's no reason for a man to go to church besides Jesus. And I'm very serious with this. Um, we have, right, I'm going to have it on screen, The Fall of Man, uh, where it talks about men being passive, right? So men aren't really against um, spirituality. They're more against Christianity. And I think that we have forgotten um, that humans love sin. <laughs> this is men and women, right? And uh, men are unrepentant. And part of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that it is um, offensive. And it is considered foolishness to those who are parroting, uh, perishing, sorry. Um, but I think we have forgotten that people are supposed to be repulsed by the gospel. And I think we have forgotten how supernatural Christ is and his um, salvation is, right? So this comes from John 10 and also John 14. John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. There uh, is no way to the Father except through the Son, right? But um, John 10 says that no one comes to the Father unless, no, no one comes to the Son unless the Father draws them. So people coming to Christ is a supernatural thing that is being led and drawn by the Holy Spirit. But we have so many gimmicks in church. We have so many marketing strategies. There's so much industrialization of worship that um, we have seeker based churches that we're using gimmicks and strategies to um, win people over. But if the Spirit is not drawing them, there's no reason you would come to church, right? And um, that's the power in the gospel of Jesus Christ um, where it's pretty repulsive, right? If I'm a man in my sin, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very candid and honest here, right? Um, I'm, I'm allowed to have as much sex as I want. If I'm coming to church within the Christian context, it says no sexual immorality. I need to present my body as a sacrifice to God. I am moving from being my own Lord and my own God to surrendering to God. So I don't think we need to sell Jesus as much as we're doing. We need people to surrender to Jesus. And I think we have forgotten that. And we see that in men. Like pride <laughs> is a very carnal and worldly and sinful thing. But that is what the world's offering, and that's also um, what you see in misogyny and um, other cultures and other religions like Black Hebrew Israelites and um, Islam, right? A bunch of violence. But in Christianity, it says if someone um, pray for those who deceitfully use you, bless those who persecute you, if someone hits you, turn the other cheek, if someone has stolen your coat, give them your cloak. So it is so countercultural when it comes to Christ and the cross. There was no reason there's something supernatural happening in the people to, to come to Christ, right? And so I think that um, people not moving in the power of the Holy Spirit um, to actually know how souls are one and redeemed, um, and we're just calling people without like praying on it, like. We need to know how the spirit draws, how seeds are sowing, uh, and how to like have sound doctrine and sound preaching. Because I know preaching is pretty soft right now. And me as a man, um, just like the way I was set up, I was very prideful, right? And so you're asking me where I'm the God of my own life, I am the Lord of all, I, I am my own God, <laughs> and I rule over myself. I need to come to a church concept and humble myself 
and serve others and not be selfish, but be selfless and die to my flesh and my wants and my desires, there is nothing appetizing about church <laughs> that you will want. Like, I have to yield to like, a, like again, I'm being my own God. I have to yield to another man in headship and authority within the fivefold ministry and church context. I'm not doing that. <laughs> And so I think that it's a very naive of us to think that if we just have this celebrity model um, worship <laughs> evangelism versus real life evangelism and discipleship that we can make Christianity um, that is offensive to be something appetizing to those who are perishing. So number two. Men don't come to church because they're sinful. <laughs> um, salvation is very supernatural, just like miracles, healing, being raised from the dead, casting out demons. And I think that we cannot escape that. So we need to have the spirit of God and the power of God in the scriptures, but also the manifestations and the works and the miracles um, internally and externally around us. Number three, why men do not go to church is it's going to be a harsh one. The church's refusal to disciple people. There are too many gimmicks in the body of Christ right now. There is too much industrialization in there. There is too much monetization of ministry without real authentic discipleship and yo i'm gonna say it because i'm struggling with this being within the church context and being a faithful christian uh, going to church for like seven years discipleship is very hard right and so uh, when we have this disingenuine um ministry basically strategy that is the same thing that you see in marketing and motivational speaking where we worry about influence and reach without depth there is no um, retention right and retention rates that's just reflection of how leadership is going and yo i'm a young adult um 26 about to be um 27 and when you are worried about platform more than power um what you're going to find is you can't fake the supernatural. I think a lot of men see through that. It's just like, yo, this is, <laughs> this is a bunch of BS. <laughs> um, we have actually a bunch of good churches. I go to a genuine church. Christianity isn't a problem, but the church model and mega churches um, and Western Christianity and the American gospel, which is just the American dream with some Jesus thrown in there. There's no surrender in there. There's no discipleship. There's no carrying up a cross. We're not <laughs> worried about followers versus actually making disciples. So again, as a young person, it's it's been very hard to actually find people to disciple me. And also, it, trying to disciple other people is really hard also. This is not an easy thing. Discipleship costs time. Discipleship um, costs emotional investment. Um, it's frustrating. It's tiring. Um, you should be investing monetarily into your um, people. It takes like biblical practices, but I think if we want a more biblical church model within the body of Christ, what we will need is um, legitimately all of us to pick two men. If you're a man, um, a young man ages 18 to 35, and then a young kid um, ages like three to 17 and we dedicate our lives to discipling them for the next 18 years. And um, this goes for the same with women. Um, choose a young woman ages 18 to 20, I mean 35. She, um, choose a young kid ages three to 17 and ch commit your life to discipling them for the next 18 years. And I think like, just like numerically, um, because this is not active in the church, but there's supposed to be, um, I think two billion um, Christians on the earth. 
And if each of us just take two people to actively evangelize, having interpersonal relationships with and disciple, we will have exponential growth in the body versus we have so much surface level Christianity um, that we do not have good doctrine. And we can actually have good doctrine. We can have Bible literacy, biblical literacy. Um, if we could just properly disciple invest in people because what we're seeing right now currently we are seeing church liberalism we're seeing uh, american christianity we're seeing western church culture we are seeing industrialized faith and we are seeing the mega church model fail and fall in front of our eyes right and it's actually a pretty good thing that is happening because um, if we see, uh, all this is making for real is false converts. And, um, again, I want to go back to like science and even like business. If something is not working, <laughs> you don't try harder for longer. You try something else. You, you try a new formula. You try a new, a new chemical balance, right? You try, you have a thesis. You change the variables to see um, the outcome. And what we're seeing with Western American Christianity, a lot of people are leaving the faith. A lot of people aren't leaving the faith. We're leaving false idolatry and created gods of ourselves. And we're calling it Jesus, right? And so I think this is actually helping us disciple properly because um, we can actually see... Um, the flaws um, in the model, right? So, I'm actually, I wanna put another video about Paul Washer talking about um, discipleship that we're gonna put on the screen and y'all should check out because he's talking that fire. He's talking spicy. It's rampant in evangelicalism today and the reason for it is first of all the gospel that is preached is no mm. gospel at all it's a gospel reduced from uh, christ the god man going to a tree and dying under the wrath of his father and rising again from the dead and seated at the right hand of the father and calling all men commanding all men to repent and believe and that the proof of saving faith is the continued fruit in their life we've reduced all that down to five things god wants you to know our four spiritual laws, and if you jump through each one of those and say yes, and then pray the little prayer in the back, some evangelist who should spend less time preaching and more time studying his Bible declares you saved. I'm very opinionated with regard to this. Uh, th that's just the point. So our gospel, second of all, there's the, it seems to me that when I look at, I, I don't consider the Catholic Church to ever have been a church, but when I look at the Catholic Church, when I look at Anglicanism and what was going on in England, when I look at what was going on in, in New England and what goes on today, it seems to me that always the devil works it out so that the great assumption is they're saved. The least amount of time, it seems eventually, is, is given to discerning what is the gospel and whether a person is truly saved. If they just walk up front and they pray that prayer, we declare them saved and start discipling them. We should maybe be working with this person for months that they come to a biblical assurance. And so our churches are filled with lost people and it's by and large because the superficiality of pastors and most of them have gone to church growth schemes and turned their church into a six flags over Jesus and they no more are preaching the gospel than a man on the moon. It's, that's not a, it's not just a contemporary problem. No, it's, problem. it's always... I read this week where A.W. Pink, I mean, he, could, he got pretty discouraged at times and could be, seemed like he could be harsh. But in his day, in the 1930s and 40s, he made the statement that he wondered if 2% of Protestantism were born again at all in America. Well, even the great, one of the greatest, most well-known evangelists in America today has said that if even 5% of all the people that have been converted in his meetings or Christian, he would be happy. And, and another thing about this so important is the idea of a compassionate, loving church discipline. I find it very strange that people do not practice church discipline because they love their congregation more than Jesus does. 
Jesus commanded them to practice church discipline. Mm-hmm. Not upon sinful people, we're all sinful, but upon rebels who show no fruit and will not turn. And, and you see, and, and the thing that's really bad is we have just come out of a liberalism. There was a move among many denominations, especially in the Southern Baptist Convention, seeing that liberalism is out. We're going right. It hasn't taken us not even a decade Mm -hmm. to go right back into neoliberalism, which, in in my opinion, the new liberalism is basically the church growth movement, where everything is done on on marketing strategies and finding the, you know, tell us what kind of church you want, and that's what we'll give you, instead of asking God what kind of bride He desires. All right, so right there we see... Um, one of the most historic revivals, um, if you know, we have like the hippie free love movement in 1950s, 1960s. So with the um, Jesus movement and revival, right, um, he said came liberalism. So we had a really good like supernatural sound teaching. And then we went back to, um, I guess like postmodernism where Christians, like men, like humans are God and um, Jesus is just self-service to whoever we want in our desires. So this is the um, preaching model that we see right now. So we just need to get back to biblical discipleship um, where it's sound doctrine mixed with proper living um, in the fivefold ministry and moving in the power of works and just the fruits of the spirits versus um, this dichotomy which is really hypocrisy of um, us preaching and living one way but the Bible teaching a whole nother subset. All right, number four top five reasons why men do not go to church and less men are Christian. Fatherlessness. Um, We see this in the book, well it's a book slash movie, The Case for Christ. Y'all should definitely check it out. It should be here on the screen but also in the book fathered by God, learning what your dad could never teach you, um, a book by John Elridge, right? And in the book, in both of the movie, it says that we can misinterpret God by our interactions with our fathers, right? And so when we interpret God by people, we misinterpret him. So uh, again, I'm going to put a statistic on the screen. We see that when the father is saved first in the nuclear family, 93% of the family follows suit. So that's like um, mother, children are also Christian. But when the mom is Christian, only 17% of the nuclear family comes to Christ, right? And then um, we have just seen like a stable decline in the nuclear family, right? Um, with um, just absentee fathers, but also um, absences and fathers actually in the home, right? And so if we have like passive men um, who aren't embodying Ephesians 5 man um, that is illustrated or just like the call of what's to be a disciple, um, then we see issues when it comes to be able to relate and talk with God. Because if I see my father as a provider, then I'm going to see God as a provider. If I see my father as an authoritarianism, uh, authoritarian, um, and wants to bash me and wants to judge me and hurt me and harm me, I think that God just wants to punish me. And so this discrepancy between what we see in humanly form and God being spirit, um, I think that we impose a lot of personality into God, into the scriptures, into Christian faith um, because of fatherlessness. And then we have to learn from flawed humans instead of an infallible um, (laughs) high priest, which is Jesus Christ, right? And so (laughs) um, that book um, back on um, Fathered by God by John Elbridge, but also the movie and the book, The Case for Christ, really illustrates how we can like reconcile ourselves back to God through Jesus Christ being empowered by the Holy Spirit. By reconciling, not, not, it's not gonna be perfect. We all can't have a great relationship with our fathers, but um, coming from single mother households or your father is in your life, um, but it is not <laughs> a healthy relationship, but it's actually toxic. <laughs> Uh, I think the gospel of Jesus Christ 
just like he said he has reconciled ourselves with the father because we were sinners and our sins separated us from god um he has atoned and washed us by grace and mercy and dying on the cross he can also heal those broken parts in us so that we can have a more stable christianity with or without our fathers i'm not saying everybody has to reconcile lord is pot everything's possible those who believe but um i do think we see this in women also with the issue of fatherlessness but i think it's especially prevalent prevalent um with men um refusing to come to christ because if I again, if I'm my own God, my pride to be strong and not surrender, um, then it's going to be really hard for me to have like a father figure in church. I'm not saying everybody in church is a father figure, but there's a lot of males in those roles. Um, I want there's going to be some parallelism between how I view God, how I view this man, how I have viewed my father. So if I have some hurt when it comes to men or authority, I'm not going to like it within the church context when it has headship and surrendering, right? So I think we need to acknowledge that just naturally, it's, this may be supernaturally because we don't war with flesh and blood, but principalities, darknesses, rulers, the devil and demons operating through people and hindering us um, in the body of Christ, right? So, yo, relationships with our fathers is a really big hindrance when it comes to our relationship with God. And then number five, last one. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be very candid and very stark with this. Mediocrity in the body of Christ. Um, I'm really just going to say, I think we, there's a lot of crap <laughs> in the body of Christ. And um, not everything. I think we have made great strides when it comes to Christian music, um, including Christian rap. But we have to admit that a lot of stuff has been bad. Um, Christian movies are still bad. Um, I think I have a top five or maybe top ten all-time Christian movies because there's not that many good movies out there. Um, so there should be a list that you can click on, best Christian movies that are out that you should check out. Um, what else? Christian comedy is very corny. Um, great Christian comedians, Kev on stage, John B. Chris. But we have to acknowledge there's so much mediocrity in Christ that... We, as a body, just need to uplift um, because the Lord is excellent. I don't think we don't ever have again, we don't ever have to sell Jesus. Church is not made for entertainment, but it should be edifying. Right. And so we have such mediocrity when it comes to preaching. People not really saying nothing. Right. Um, I've been in church services where I was like, man, I could just stay at home and read my Bible. The Holy Spirit is teaching me like legitimately. Uh, I want to do this quick tangent. I know I was saying men hate tangents, but I was in an early church, young, um, maybe I've been going to church one or two years, but the Holy Spirit was like grooming me so much. I will go into church. This dude would be preaching and he was a pastor, pick one um, verse and then go on a crazy tangent. But <laughs> I'll go to that verse, I would read the accompanying scripture in context at the beginning of the verse all the ones that came before all the verses that came below and then i'll be learning a whole bunch i was learning more in the scriptures versus a sermon that's being spoken to me because of mediocrity in preaching and so if we are honest about the church body it's like we have a five-fold ministry teachers, prophets, evangelists, pastors, apostles to edify the body for the building up of the ministry. But if the body is not doing that, then we we have a bad system in place. And so if I'm only putting up with it because I'm Christian and I'm in the church context, like the Christian context, I'm not going to tell people who aren't saved to be like, hey, come into this context and it's whack. <laughs> um, bad music, cliche preaching, terrible celebrity worship and idolatry. I'm not going to tell you all this mediocrity and be like, no, 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 no. Jesus is, Jesus is good when the Jesus that we are presenting is not the Jesus that's being offered in the scriptures, 
right? So I think it's just like, yo, can we as a body get well, right? Can we move in the supernatural? It's really like, no lie, it's real hypocrisy. <laughs> it's a lot of hypocrisy and being like, hey, your body is a temple when the pastor who is preaching is fat. Like there's a bunch of stuff in the body of Christ where it's greedy, it's hypocritical, it's judgmental. It's like, hey, can we get ourselves together where there isn't mediocrity in Christ and we're moving in excellence and we're actually the best at what we're doing and we're better than what the world has to offer? Because if I'm choosing, I don't know, they, they call it, uh, what is it, a Holy Ghost party over the club in the lounge, I don't want to get there and wish I would have stayed at home and play video games or binge watch something, right? And so I think if we all elevate, and I think if we're just honest, the body crisis is not really honest. I think we always simmer down or we tolerate mediocrity because people are doing it for Christ. But doing something for Christ and doing something being called by Christ are two different things. And I think if more people move in their anointing, and if we were just constructive and honest, um, with people being mediocre you may continue and get better or you may just stop and do something else that you're actually good and called to so that's my last reason why men don't go to church there's a lot of like mediocre stuff in there when it comes to movies comedy <laughs> music um, that if we get out the body of Christ giving a genuine um, worship experience, genuine sound doctoring, preaching, being good workmen, able to rightly divide the word of truth, then I think the enjoyable experience will lead to less false converts than what we see in the body of Christ. All right. Yo, um, let me hear from you. If I miss anything, those are my top five. Um, comment below. Um, number one. <laughs> Uh, the church panders too much to women, especially single women, because it's very profitable. Um, number two, um, faith is supernatural. Um, people love their sin and they're unrepentant, so we need to recognize that. Number three, lack of discipleship. Until you actually disciple and evangelize two people with the true gospel of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, resurrection, our sinful nature and needing salvation, from Jesus Christ, a Lord to rule over us. And because we cannot redeem ourselves, but God um, is good enough to give us grace, a gift that we cannot earn freely, then, yo, we're going to get what we're going to get. False converts. Um, number four, fatherlessness. Um, we need sound households. And then five, mediocrity. All right. Um, yo, thank you for watching. Um, remember again that this video has been sponsored by e525 apparel ephesians 525 apparel about biblical manhood if y'all want the verse about it and uh, faith in humanity with their mustard seed necklaces um, make sure that you come back next wednesday again at my relationship series or relationship thursday teaching videos but sound doctrine teaching videos which is my favorite stuff. I don't really do like talking about relationships, but that's all people want. Um, but Sound Doctrine, um, <laughs> regular Bible study, Wisdom Wednesdays is on Wednesdays. This is where we um, don't move on milk. I think we need more intermediate and uh, expert level meat when it comes to scripture, right? And so, whew. Um, <laughs> uh, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on your bell notifications so that just that you know I have a new video coming up next week. Yo, I'm very excited to be about this. Uh, I think that's all we got. Um, what's the next video I'm talking about? Uh, I think the next video I'm going to talk about is zodiacs and horoscopes and why you cannot follow Jesus and follow zodiacs and horoscopes also so we're going to get into it so remember that um god blesses people by using people to bless people so how have you been a blessing to someone else today everything else is in the description box below